Welcome back, everybody, to another episode here at Just Stolen. Last time here on Just Stolen, we were playing some Higurashi When They Cry Chapter 2 with Tanagashi Hen, and today we're going to be playing some Higurashi When They Cry Chapter 2 with Tanagashi Hen. Whoa, that's a mind blow and a half. All right, so. We were helping set up for the Watanagashi Festival when, toward the end of the event, not the festival itself, but the event of putting it together as a community, Shion came and greeted us with some tea right before Mion came to try and greet us with some tea, and then Shion was a bitch, and then made Mion chug them both, and then somebody came and took a picture. I wonder who that could be. Anyway, let's jump right back in. Yay. Just then, I heard the snap of a camera shutter. Good evening. The festival is coming up tomorrow. Thanks for all your hard work setting it up today. Oh shit, I don't remember what voice I gave her. She only had a few lines last chapter. I don't remember, it was... Good evening. Oh, Shion chan It's quite unusual for you to come here. I'll just give her something like that, it's fine. Oh hey, it's Tomotake Takano-san! Good evening, it's been a while, hasn't it? So you're that transfer student I've been hearing about. Keichimai Barakun, right? You really did a bang up job today, I'm impressed. I feel like I've seen this photographer guy before. Um, have we met before? I'm glad you remembered. We've passed many times on the road, Keichikun. I'm Tomatake. I'm a freelancing photographer from Tokyo. From Tokyo. Good evening. Do you recognize me? Uh, I'm sorry, but I don't. She's Mio Takano-san. Do you remember when you were at the doctor's office when you slotted cold, Kei-chan? Mio-san is one of the nurses who works there. Call me Takano. I'm pleased to meet you. Tell me when you're coming in for treatment. I'll prepare a huge needle for you. Oh, that's... Very thoughtful of you. Tomotake-san seemed to be quite entertained at the Sonazaki twins being in the same place, and he took a picture. And he took picture after picture. Wow, I'd heard that you are identical twins, but it really is quite something to see you side by side. You really do look exactly alike. We're not just alike on the outside. See, our underwear matches too. <laughs> Yeah, you idiot! What the heck are you doing? Things have never been as lively as when the two of these, the two of them, are together. Wow. Oh, I, want... I hope you guys can't hear those sirens. Colchester's getting lively. All right. I thought they were exactly the same at first, but I've started to get a handle on which is which. Mion is Mion, and she owned well. She seems a far better actor than Mion was. In the first place, somebody that could spurn me on so easily wouldn't have shown such weakness to those lack buckets at Angel Mort. Lack buckets? Jesus, Dylan. Lard buckets at Angel Mort. What the fuck is a lack bucket? If that was the case, then that cowardly behavior from that day was all... It was all a complete act. That bitch. They were even more alike when they were little. I heard even their parents had a hard time telling which was which. That's really easy to imagine. I totally understand what they must have gone through. Takano gave me kind of an odd look, but explaining would have been a pain, so I didn't bother. Tomotake, you going straight back to Tokyo after you get your pictures of the festival? Yep, though I'd rather just stay here forever. Silly adult things, that's all. I hope your photos win a fabulous prize soon. I've been praying for it. Thanks. Next time I come, I'll bring the pictures I took of you all today. My Barakun, you did a lot of work today. You must be tired from all the physical labor you're not used to. Huh? Well, I'm tired, but it was pretty fun. Ah, youth. I'm so jealous. Takano smiled with an adult elegance that no one in my circle of friends possessed. I don't know if that's adult elegance, but okay. <laughs> the wind caught her hair. She gives off an intelligent beauty. 
Eh. Oh, why, hello, everyone! It seemed like our merry crowd was standing out, this time an overweight older man addressed us. And again, it was someone I thought that I knew. If I recall correctly, he's a policeman, isn't he? Oh, Oishi-san. Good evening. Doing a preliminary security inspection for tomorrow? Nah, ha, ha, ha. Something like that. Oh, if it isn't Tomatake-san. It's certainly been a while. I'm honored you remembered my name. You really do love Inumizawa, don't you? The apartment around here are far cheaper than the ones there in Tokyo. You should just move here and get it over with. I know a real tie I can introduce you to. I appreciate the thought. I'd very much like to follow up on that. <laughs> Alright, everyone, have a good year. And Happy New Year to the Sonazaki twins, too. Happy New Year, Detective Oishi. We appreciate your work. We'd like to end this year's festival with the least amount of inconvenience possible. That's pretty strict on me. <laughs> Detective Oishi left us with a low laugh and headed off to talk to some police officers standing a ways away. That's fair. I mean, it makes sense that they'd be investigating the festival even before it happened at this point. I gave Mion a glance and saw her making an annoyed face as if she were glaring bullets at someone she hated. Yeah, it'd be nice if the police didn't have anything to do during Watanagashi this year. <laughs> you like this place too, don't you? Oh, you mean to say you dislike it, Jiro-san? I quite enjoy such fantastic stories, you know. Especially with the times being so dry and uninteresting. The curse of Oyashiro sama you mean? Curse? Tomitake-san is using a troubling word. Then suddenly someone tugged on my arm. Okay, John, I'm pretty hungry. Want to go to the tent with the drinks and have some candy and sweets? Mm, I'm up for that. I've gotten a little hungry as well. Okay, let's go. A moment later, Shion said something to Takano and Tomitake that stung my ears and gave me a start. I wonder who will die and who will disappear this year. I pulled back from Mion's grip and stopped abruptly. Shion, what did she just say? Felt like the air around us dried out all of a sudden. Let's go, Kei-chan. They're talking about something silly anyway. You still haven't told Kei-chan? I make it a point not to spread stories like that. Shion's cold and quiet tone and Mion's harsh, wor harsh voice were quite the contrast. Hey, wait, hold on. What are you talking about? If you know something, then just tell me. It doesn't feel right being the only one left out, you know. I don't understand this. Someone explain it to me. However, Mion didn't seem to be all that willing to grant that request. She squeezed my hand in hers a bit, but when she realized I would hold my ground on this topic, she let go. I'm gonna go to the drinking tent first, then. If you don't come soon, Keichan, there won't be any left for you. Uh, I get it already. I'll be there soon. Mion left, trotting towards a particularly noisy tent on the other side of the shrine grounds. Before she got there, she stopped and turned back around. I showed no signs of going after her, though, so she ran off. I could tell you if you haven't heard, I suppose. But it might be smarter not to ask and go with her to eat dessert. Hey now, you've already gotten my full attention here. I'm not going to leave without asking at this point. I think Kei-chan has the right to hear this too. My sister was just stealing that from you. Shion's voice was bristling with thorns as if somehow blaming Mion. What on earth are you talking about? I don't really like people acting so self-important. <laughs> Takano-san, how, realizing how prepared I was, looked across the group. After confirming that there were no objections, she opened her mouth. Do you believe in curses, my Barakun? Curses? 
I think they're interesting, but not really. I felt their cynical stares and winced. It's like they were telling me it was stranger not to believe in curses. You're not wrong, Kei-chan. Curses are just superstition. It's only natural that you wouldn't believe in them. Mm-hmm. Besides, you could take all the time you need to decide whether to believe in curses after you've heard us through. That said, er, hmm, said Takano-san giving a little smile. I don't know why I misread that one. Come on now. Come on, Dylan. Get it together. Quit trying to scare me. At least, that's what it feels like. Alright, I'll start. Keichikun, do you know about the Hinamizawa Dam project? Oh yeah, the other day at Angel Mort, Shiona, or Mion, rather, told me all about it. You mean the plan for the giant dam that would flood all of Hinamizawa, right? That's right. Residents of the town banded together to fight it, and a fierce battle with the government unfolded. I've heard of that too. Oh, I've heard that too. The entire village united using all the power at their disposal. Mass media, blah, blah, blah. mass media, political influence, and other things. And fought the country. The way Mion described it, it made it sound like a boast. Oh, you know quite a bit about it. Yes, you're right. It's practically an epic tale. How just a thousand or so villages banded together and rejected the government's plans. Did you hear this from my sister? She likes those kind of epics, you know. Yeah, she told me. There was, however, an office for the Hinamizawa residents' opposition faction. It was the shrine. You know, the assembly hall? That's where it used to be. Now that the whole thing is over, the senior citizens just use it for group activities. At the time, though, it was their last bastion. Takano-san explained this, pointing a finger towards the assembly hall. I'd been carrying things in and out of there all day. I mean, I would understand if they put an office like that in the mayor's house or something. Having an office on shrine grounds made it feel kind of like a base camp for Sengoku period warriors. <laughs> that was basically the mindset, though. Do, 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 do. Placing the main force in the shrine dedicated to Oyashiro-sama, Hinemizawa's guardian deity, was like a prayer for victory. Oyashiro-sama. That was definitely it. I mentioned Oyashiro-sama's curse before. Is it the same Oyashiro-sama? Can't read today, Jesus. Do you know about Oyashiro-sama, Keiichi-kun? It's the name of the god worshipped at this shrine. It's said that he protects all of Hinamizawa. Well, I don't really know much about him. I see. I think Takano-san knows more about the rest. Tag, you're it. Well, that is generally the whole story. Oyashiro-sama is the ancient god passed down in Hinimizawa, and the villagers say he has been protecting the sanctuary from the poisons of the outside world. So essentially, he's a so essentially he's a basic standard Gerudian deity. Gerudian. Can't read it all today. I am sorry. <laughs> I'm trying my best. I guess you can't find that sort of god anywhere you go. There's research into. Whether worshipping Oyashiro-sama is a manifestation of a kind of elitism, too. What I mean is that the worshippers might think of themselves as chosen people. Believing yourself chosen, a nationalistic belief that you're a part of a superior race, or that you're a special clan chosen by the gods. They believe that they're a superior clan, so they believe strongly in cooperating with others. They also end up being exclusionary towards other clans. I won't go into much detail, but it's sort of national and religious ideas that lead to war. Of course, that goes for Japan, too. Yeah, pretty much. A long time ago, the people of Hinamizawa strongly believed themselves different from humans, that they were above them. They believed that the interaction with the lower world would sully their souls. So everyone believed that if one from the lower world came to the village, they would be sullied and suffer the wrath of Oyashiro-sama. Apparently, that kept everyone away. Villages that hate outsiders come up all the time in mystery novels. This was once a classic example of xenophobic village. Of a xenophobic village. Village. Well, they'll deny it to preserve their pride. It was all a long time ago, after all. Things are different now. She unfollowed up quickly, having sensed the thorns in Tomitake-san's words. 
Shomitake-san, embarrassed at what he said, scratched his head. Hmm. So this shrine worships Oyashiro-sama, thinks of Hinamizawa as holy ground, and it's a symbol of their traditional hatred of the outside world. I get it. So that's why they chose the shrine of Hinamizawa's guardian. <sighs> Spirit is the base of operations. Sorry about that yawn. Really needed it, I guess. To resist the solely dam construction project that came from the outside. Correct. Smiled. Correct. Smiled Takano, please. She must dislike stupid people. <laughs> Superstition, every last bit of it. The villagers gave everything desperate to oppose the dam construction. And right in the midst of it, the incident drove home the finishing blow. Incident. That's the word. Jesus. Oyashiro-sama's curse. The person managing the construction site of the Hinamizawa Dam was murdered. Four years ago, I believe. It took the newspapers by storm. Do you remember it? Uh, no, not really. He had a fight with a subordinate and was beaten to death with a pickaxe. His limbs and head were torn off and the remains disposed of. The construction manager was murdered and dismembered. Such a gruesome incident. But it was just that, an incident. A person caused the incident, after all. Should they really put it down to the, the curse? Then, the following year, the man who had organized Hinamizawa's group of damn pro blah, 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 proponents, proponents, never heard that word in my goddamn life. Hold on. Now Dylan needs to look up the word proponents. What the fuck is that? What does that even mean? Proponent. Proponent. A person who advocates a theory, proposal, or project. God, I dislike stupid people. <laughs> he fell from a cliff while on vacation and died. Apparently it was an accident. Of course, most of Hinamizawa was hostile towards him. The police were all over the case as if it were a homicide, but in the end it was judged to have been an accident. Now it's an accident. This is the most curse-like one, but it's still far-fetched. And then, on the next year, this time, the priest of the shrine contracted an unknown illness and suddenly died. This may sound a little rude, but the old priest was kind of a wait-and-see type. The whole village was in an uproar about the dam, but he just kind of didn't seem to want to bother. The shrine was the symbol of the opposition movement, and the, its priest... Well, his attitude worked against him. The villagers at the time had hoped for a leader, but their hopes were betrayed. Some people were apparently pretty angry too. So at the time, all the older people were like, This is Oyashiro-sama's curse. That's what they said. It did seem like every year dam related people and the village had resentment towards were dying. It was pretty creepy. Why was that so hard for me to read? Why do I suck today? Ah! Oh, and also, it's interesting, all of these incidents and accidents always happen on the night of the Watanagashi Festival. What? See, starting to sound like a curse now, isn't it? Then, the year after that. I keep fucking changing her voice. I'm just gonna go with female Tomatake voice. In other words, last year, the sister-in-law of the man who was the leader of the dam proponents... The one who accidentally died was discovered dead, having been beaten to death. Of course, they caught the criminal. See? Really seems like a curse, huh? Four years in a row. Each one of the incidents and accidents were relatively commonplace. But every single one of them happening on the night of the festival, worshipping Oyashiro-sama, that's not normal. The old folks have been blindly accepting Oyashiro-sama's curse because of the incidents these past few years. Even younger people, too. At first they thought it was stupid, but now nobody makes fun of it. Yeah, I can see where she's coming from. Even me. Even if I didn't think there was a curse at all, thinking about all the incidents like this made me feel like... Maybe it's real? For example, just look at the preparations for the festival you were doing today. Everything might have gone crazy during the battle against the dam, but just a few years ago the Watanagashi Festival was never this well attended. Well, I guess you're right. If we didn't have Oyashiro-sama to talk about, we wouldn't all be coming this way for a festival like this, huh? There's a lot of people who say that infidels might be punished, 
So they really need to go to Oyashiro-sama's festival. Shio nodded as if she were mocking herself. So how about now? Keichi-kun, you're starting to get the feeling that maybe, just maybe, the curse is real, aren't you? I mean, you can't just laugh off people related to the damn construction project all dying like that. If even I feel like this now, then the more superstitious members of the village must feel stronger than that. Well, I mean, I still don't think there's a curse. I can understand that... I can understand those that believe there is, though. Wow, Kei-chan. You can really keep a cool head about this. Shion grinned, realizing I'd rejected the curse. If it's neither a curse nor a coincidence, then... What should we make of these incidents? Takano said, smiling playfully as if posing a riddle. Neither of us... Blah, blah, blah. Neither a curse nor a coincidence. Can't read today. But every year, someone dies. What should we make of that, then? Tomitake-san, catching on to the fact that I had no idea what to make of it, opened his mouth and came to my aid. Takano-san is suggesting that it might be the work of real people. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Simple process of elimination would have gotten me there. I was a little taken aback at having not realized the answer immediately. Well, think about it. If it's neither a curse nor a coincidence, then people must be willingly carrying it out. It's the only explanation, right? Pressed Takano-san, I smiled bitterly in spite of myself. Here I, was, here I was, just a few minutes ago, thinking the very concept of a curse was absolutely absurd. When she'd suggested it was someone's doing, I ended up thinking... There wasn't any way it could be a person. takano san was right. It was either a curse or it was a person. If unrealistic things like curses didn't exist, then the obvious next step would be to start thinking it was people behind it. But if that was the case, I glanced at Shion. If the culprit is a person, then they'd have to be someone from Hinamizawa. That's what the police officer Oishi-san thinks right now, too. But hey, wait. That can't be... I thought I now knew the reason Mion didn't want to talk about this. If all your Shiro-sama's curse really existed, then that's fine. It'd be divine judgment for the damn project business. However, if all your Shiro-sama's curse didn't exist, which obviously it didn't, then the culprit would most likely be someone from Inamizawa. The villagers had worked desperately to oppose the damn construction project. I knew they had used all sorts of methods to fight against it. If one of those methods was... maybe... People whisper that Oyashiro-sama's curse could be the doing of a secret group in the damn resistance movement. Shion Trally put words into my exact thoughts. To my exact thoughts. Of course, I didn't expect it. She was from Hinamizawa, so I didn't think she'd come out and say it herself. If you calm down and think about it, anyone would come to the same conclusion. There wouldn't be a motive for anyone but people who benefit from the opposing from opposing the damn project, right? I guess that's true. Admitting to the existence of a darker side of the damn conflicts would be rude to Mion, who spoke of it so highly. So I couldn't just accept Shion's seemingly logical viewpoint. One more thing. The police probably don't know this. There's proof that someone from Hinamizawa committed these crimes, and the people of Hinamizawa know it. Uh, what? Shion rebukes me to keep my voice down. <laughs> Every time I read the word rebuke, I just think of the hellish rebuke. A uh, spell from D and D, just like light you on fire, like literally on fire. <laughs> S sorry, but this proof, what is it? It's the fact that one person dies and w one more person disappears. One more person disappears. Did that mean that someone besides the one who died from the curse? Did that mean that someone besides the one who died from the curse was a sacrifice? There we go, Dylan. Pat, pat. What do you mean by disappear? They just vanish and you never see them again? That's right. Suddenly and without a trace. As she spoke, she unpretended to do a trick with her hands, like she were making a magician's hat disappear. One dies a mysterious death and one disappears, never to be seen again. Strange vanishing act. But then why? How does that equate to someone from Hinamizawa being the culprit? Well, actually, Hinamizawa has this one really old legend. 
It's about how people offer sacrifices to Oyashirasama to calm his wrath. S sacrifices? Yes. They say they used to wrap a living person up in, bam in a bamboo mat and let them slowly sink down into a bottomless swamp. Oh. Takano san, though, explaining something pretty terrible has a look of glee on her face as she did so. As far as I can glean from the literature, it actually took three days and three nights for them to sink. See, even people a long time ago like symbolism. <laughs> okay. As the body sunk, Oyashiro-sama's anger would be quelled. Both were submerged into the deep. <laughs> takano san was the only one laughing at this. Was she telling a joke or something? Shion didn't move to deny it, but I felt a difference in temperature between her cool expression and Takano's. This whole conversation, well, I think you can imagine after hearing it, but it's the secret history of Hinamizawa. Everyone who has been in Hinamizawa for a long time knows it, but they won't talk about it. Takano-san's not from here, but she knows quite a lot. She really likes local history, folk legends, stuff like that. She learned about it all by herself, too. I'm not really all that amazing. Just curious, that's all. Like a child. I just want to see scary things for the fun of it. tomotake son laughed, a little bit embarrassed. But wait a minute. What does that mean? The other person who disappears during the incidents, you're saying they, they're offered as a sacrifice? Yeah. Yeah? Shion answers in one word before no one else can speak. Every time there's no nameplate and it does that, I always get the person wrong. Someone dies, then someone disappears. Hmm. Well, whether they actually get sacrificed or not is a different issue. But every time something happened in the past, one person died and the other person disappeared. For example, the first one where the dam site manager was killed. Apparently, one of those people responsible for that still hasn't been arrested. Couldn't that... Couldn't that just mean he managed to get away? I don't see why we should treat him as a sacrifice. Well, that's basically what I think, too. There was also the year after that, with the leader of the dam proponents. Er, you said he fell from a cliff and died while on vacation, right? Apparently his wife fell as well. Police investigated fervently, but they were never able to find the wife's corpse. The, the river under the cliff was actually pretty high at the time, though. She could have just been buried under the sand at the bottom of some lake downstream or something. The perpetrator of a dismemberment like that wouldn't want to be caught. So they'd be... whoops. So they'd be desperate to run away and hide, too. I thought I'd heard about the cases where the corpse wouldn't surface after the person drowned in a swelled river like that. She vanished because of an unfortunate accident, but I still didn't see the connection to sacrifices. If you took each of the past incidents in turn, none of the disappearance... None of the disappearances evoked that terrifying of an image. Jeez, come on. The year after that, with the priest suddenly falling ill and dying is much clearer, his wife left a suicide note. They found it in their house the night the priest died. It said something along the lines of her quelling Oyashiro-sama's wrath through her death. Curse. Seems to turn up in this one, though. Well, we may never know the truth of the matter. The swamp the wife drowned herself in was the giant bottomless one Takano mentioned before. The police investigated it, but all they could find were several of her possessions. They never found a corpse. The police suspect it was a faked suicide, and they're still investigating it now. Someone dies every year, and in the same way, someone goes missing every year. Is she trying to tell me that everyone who vanished was kidnapped by some extremely efficient means and dumped into the bottomless swamp, still alive and drowned to death? But a curse. That's unbelievable in its own right. And the next year. What was it? The dam proponent's sister-in-law? She was killed. So at that time, someone else vanished. Someone did disappear. There was a boy around my age named Satoshi Hojo. He's the nephew by marriage of the woman killed. Shion cut in with a slightly strong tone of voice. She knew the boy who had disappeared pretty well. At least that's the vibe I was getting. Well, that about sums everything up. One person always dies, and one person always suddenly disappears. 
Leaving the suddenness aside, the fact that each incident involves one person disappearing. In fact, was that, yeah, whatever. Or, er, so that means the first person who dies is because of Voyager's Sama's curse, and the second person who vanishes is because the villagers sacrificed them, is that it? Okay, Chan, there is no curse. Somebody kills the first person under the guise of the curse, and someone takes away the second person to be a sacrifice. But Shion, that means... That means the criminal is in the village. That's what I've been guessing from the start. It's pretty shocking, though, you know. We live in the Showa period. It's kind of hard to believe that people are committing murder like it's nothing, using some ancient justifications, huh? It didn't have anything to do with our discussion, but I got the feeling that maybe Shion didn't like Hinamizawa very much. I can't blame her. Mion enjoyed talking about Hinamizawa and its epic tales. So she had avoided talking about Oishiro Sama's curse, which didn't paint Inumizawa in a good light no matter how you looked at it. She was trying not to give me a bad impression of the village, so she said nothing. Shion, on the other hand, was somehow different. She wasn't rejecting the concept of a curse to purge Inumizawa of this bad impression, but rather because she strongly believed that a member of the village was the criminal behind this. Her conviction seemed a bit removed from the tight sense of community held by the people here. Once upon a time, they looked so alike you could mistake one for the other, but talking to her now, I was getting a powerful feeling that Shion had a completely different personality than Mion. Gee, I wonder what gives you that impression. I feel like you should have known that a while ago. Then everyone else, they all think someone from Hinamizawa did it, right? Neither Shion nor Takano-san answered that. The deafening silence told me all that needed to be said. But let me ask another question. If someone from Hinamizawa is the culprit, then who is it? Neither Shion nor Takano-san had a reply to that question either. Though it may have been rude to ask, I'd hoped they wouldn't have one. They wouldn't have one. The reason I asked was to argue that their explanation that the culprit was from Hinamizawa was nothing more than one possibility. Shion caught on to my plan. She gave me a pained smile at my petty spite and opened her mouth to speak. <laughs> All I said really just amounts to circumstantial evidence anyway. If any of us knew who it really was, we'd have gotten them into police hands already. As would anybody. What about Takano-san? She too smiled dryly as Shion had, and opened her own mouth. Um, well, I'd like to clear one thing up. I'm not a detective nor anything, alright? In all honesty, I'm not really interested in who the culprit is. <laughs> Takano-san, you sure are a handful. Tomotake-san gives a bitter laugh at her surprising opinion on the matter. You see, I just like cruel and atrocious ancient tra traditions and fairy tales. <laughs> I only enjoy them from a curious onlooker's perspective. So even for this string of incidents, it's not so much finding out who the culprit is, but enjoying thinking about how the old traditions displayed by the incidents themselves still seems to have some pretty deep roots around here. Though she described herself as nothing more than a curious onlooker, her smile was as sharp as the tip of a blade. Women like her felt very strange and a little scary for me. Maybe it's just that I was in fearful awe of the person whose emotions I couldn't comprehend. Well, I don't think any of this is interesting at all. The Watanagashi Festival is coming up tomorrow, but I don't want anyone to die or disappear. Tomorrow, huh? That's right. It completely slipped my mind, but the whole reason I'm standing here right now is because it's tomorrow, Jesus Christ, Keiichi. The string of murder incidents people attributed to Oyashiro's Kama's curse it wasn't over. If last year's incident wasn't the end, then tomorrow night at the festival, would someone die and someone disappear? I do wonder who will die tomorrow and who will disappear, though. Takano-san said, running a comb through her hair with elegant movements, with a thin smile and a voice that nearly made me shudder. She almost looked like she was enjoying the thought of the incidents that could happen tomorrow. Then out of the blue we heard a loud round of applause. It seemed to be ending the drinking party early. Right, I was making me on wait this whole time, wasn't I? I should go back and talk to her soon. You're teasing the kid too much, Takano-san. Now Kei kun thinks it's all true. <laughs> I apologize. It's that bad habit of mine again said Takano-san, sticking out her tongue bashfully. The strangeness in her expression was nowhere to be found. When Takano-san sees an innocent child like you, she can't help wanting to poke fun at them. It's a real bad habit. Yet, you listened to everything so earnestly that she ended up getting carried away. 
Unlike Takano-san, Tomotake-san seemed like a totally normal person with common sense. They were apologizing after realizing what kind of impression they'd given me. The stuff Takano-san just said is all fiction. If it made you harbor any bad impressions about Inumizawa, then we apologize for that. Jeez, Jiro-san. You apologize too, to Takano-san. Tell him you're sorry for scaring him. Takano-san and Tomotake-san were arguing and messing around now. The strained air around us had already dissipated. Kei-chan, you really should get going soon, too. Mion is the jealous type. If she sees me, she'll probably start a fight, so I'll just be going home. Really? Then I'll go see what Mion's doing and apologize for making her wait, I guess. Sorry for being such a nuisance, Kei-chikun. Just tell Mion-chan we're sorry for borrowing you for so long. But, uh, yeah. I don't think telling her will make her feel any better, but sure. Tomotake-san and Takano-san, standing next to each other, both began to chuckle. Okay then, Kei-chan. Let's try and run into each other again tomor at tomorrow's festival. We'll see each other. I mean, it's us we're talking about, after all. <laughs> we'll be making so much trouble to be hard for you not to find us. Yeah. It's gonna be the five demon firefight or whatever the fuck. Shion and I said our goodbyes to Tomotake-san and Takano-san. Before we could leave, Takano-san called out to us one last time. Thanks for listening so earnestly to what I had to say. You're just so good at listening. I had a great time talking to you. Good at listening? Uh, no, not at all. I was just in a state of perpetual bewilderment from all the shocking topics being thrown at me one after the other. Did you like my story today? Well, it was pretty interesting. Then I'll tell you some more sometime, okay? There's a lot of pretty interesting legends and fairy tales about Hinamizawa. Of course, a lot of strange and creepy ones, too. I'll choose a bunch of my favorites and tell you about them. I was kind of happy, but kind of worried. I can't help but smile dryly and scratch my head. Kechikun, you could go now. Takano-san is just messing with you. They say goodbye again and run off. I heard Tamatake-san call out behind him in a clear voice that we would see each other at the festival tomorrow. When I went to the tent, Mion was waiting for me in. She was nowhere to be found. I made her wait so long. Maybe she got mad and went home. After asking some adults passing by, I did hear that she went home talking to some relatives. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. But my regret for having me on wait wasn't enough to triumph over the impression Takano and San and Shion's uncanny story left on me. Serial murder incidents had happened for four years in a row. Would tomorrow's events make this the fifth? And the possibility that someone from Inamizawa was carrying this all out under the guise of the curse. A queer tradition of ritual sacrifice. Entirely unbecoming of the Showa period that we lived in. I regretted it a little. Though it was too late. If none of those creepy stories had anything to do with me. Then I should have let Mion pull me away from that crowd. I felt a little ashamed about letting my cheap curiosity get the better of me. Whew! I was wondering how long that's going to go on. I was so out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, I knew that was going to drag on. It was an exposition scene. Every exposition scene in this fucking series drags on like that. Holy shit, we got four tips. Next episode is going to be tips galore. Nothing but tips. Just the tips. All right. We got an achievement. A little elbow grease. Huh? That we did. All right. So. Whew. We made some good progress, though, today. Um. About uh, 10 minutes over our normal time, and that's fine. Uh, we can pick this ag up again on Monday, which will be ba -ba 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 -ba. Monday the 22nd. So um, get your, get ready for that. Uh, we have a lot of tips to read, and the Five Demon Firefight in the Watanagashi Festival happen tomorrow. So that means we've hit the point of no return, <laughs> because that's just how this game works. All right. I will see you guys next time. Hope you're still enjoying the series. I tried to give it a lot of vigor today. It was fun. It was nice. I'm glad uh, we're getting to the, the meat and potatoes of uh, Chapter 2 again now. That's pretty rad. That's pretty rad. I'll see you soon. Love y'all. Have a good rest of your night. Peace.